Hi there, Lise Dewsbury here, continuing on with the detailed analysis part of my feedback for Bumbling Idiots Can Make a Difference. Um, my detailed analysis always starts with the overview evaluation. So if you haven't already heard that, go back and have a listen to it. It was my 84th vlog um, in my um, How Not to Get Feedback from Elise series. And I did uh, the overview evaluation. Now I'm going to do what would be tacked onto this to that if I were doing a detailed analysis where I go through and um, I go through the actual script and get more specific on a, you know, word by word, page by page basis. A lot of it will be repeats of things that I said in the overview evaluation, but they will hopefully um, show why those things came up in the overview and give more examples of them, hopefully. Okay. So, uh, and, and all, everything I said about everything that I'm saying is just an opinion that I said at the beginning of the overview evaluation is also true in a detailed analysis. Everything's just an opinion meant to be constructive rather than destructive. Uh, use what's useful, discard what isn't and no need to defend your choices. Okay, so at the top, I, I really good setup of the stakes when they start out by saying, guys, we need to find some usable parts. Or we'll be up a creek without a paddle, you know, starting us right out with, um, with some high stakes. So I love that. Um, and then they, it says that they, accident, uh, that they accidentally press a button that activates the AI prototype. Um, and, and you tell us that, I'm just reviewing what's happening in this scene, and uh, the setting is, um, as the curtains rise open, Tim, Mark, and Sarah are seen rummaging through a pile of discarded electronics. I would like more setup for that, because I'm not quite sure what's happening. Why is there an AI prototype there? Is it part, is it one of the discarded electronics, or is it in a room with other stuff? Not quite sure what's going on in there. Note, too, that uh, Mark says, relax, Tim, so right away we know that his name is Tim. Um, we don't find out uh, Mark and Sarah's names until we get into the lyric that's coming up next. And then I wonder about that, because how often would you, do you refer to someone in the third person when you're talking to them, which I think is happening. So that's something to bear in mind that oftentimes writers forget that, um, that the, the um, your audience can't see the names of the characters. And so you want to be thinking about when do I need them to know that name? It doesn't have to happen in the first moment, but, but you have to be aware of whether you're whether your audience has heard the name yet or not. And if they know, especially because if we see a scene with these people, and then if we were in the kind of play where we would move on to another scene and someone would say, hey, Sarah told me about you. If I didn't know that the woman I'd seen in the previous scene was named Sarah, I wouldn't make the connection. So it seems like a small thing, but you want to always check it out. Um, so the, the, AI, the AI says, um, hello, I am the AI prototype. How may I assist you? And Tim's response is, uh, sorry, we didn't mean to activate you. Uh, but but my immediate, I'm wondering, aren't are, how do they react? Did they know there was an AI prototype? It, it, does it scare them? Does it excite them because they think it'll help them? Does it scare them because they didn't know it was there? Um, I, I didn't get enough of a reaction. There's not a, enough point of view in sorry, we didn't mean to, to activate you to let me know how are they reacting to this. Um, and then Mark says, we were just playing a game of press random buttons and you happen to be the unlikely contestant. I was like, well, no, they they were trying to find something useful so they wouldn't be up a creek without a paddle. So they weren't being random and um, they weren't playing a game. So I, I feel like, although I'll tell I tell you what does work about it is that it's a fun way to sort of let us see that maybe Mark's a bit of a joker. Mark has a bit of a cynical attitude. Um, but but at the same time, you don't want to lose the sense of tension of what's going on here. So again, if Mark were to say something like that, maybe someone else would say, oh, for heaven's sake, Mark, you know, it's, it, this isn't a game. This is serious. You know what I'm saying? So that you, we continue to feel like there's some something serious going on here. Um, he then says, uh, AI says, as long as we're all here, how about we work together to prevent an imped impending disaster? So again, that doesn't sound, how did the AI know there was an impending disaster? Why didn't they tell the, you know, they're, they're going to be up a creek without a paddle. Why didn't they, why aren't they the ones who told the AI that there was an impending disaster? And just to be, you know, really picky youn about uh, semantics, why does the AI say an impending disaster instead of the impending disaster? Is Are they talking about the same thing? Is the being up a creek without a paddle that they were talking about the same thing as the impending disaster that AI is mentioning? Uh, and I, I'm not getting those specifics, so I don't really know. Um, so the specifics I'm questioning are, do they all work here? Are they all on the same level? 
what is this place doing? What is the specific nature of the threat? What happened to everyone else who works there? If they're not experts in the field, why do they think they can help? Are any of them an expert? What are they looking for in the electronics? What are they expecting? And I think the important thing to note is that on the first page of your show, you don't want me asking this many questions because it distracts me from the show. So help me out a bit. Um, so now we get into the song, searching through a pile of junk, we need some parts or we're sunk. We already know that. That's what they said in the very first moment. They, they're, they need to find some stuff or they'll be up, up without a paddle. So I felt like, so we're not getting new material in the song. We're being told what we already know. The intro itself musically is pretty gentle. It's a pretty gentle little sort of four bar umchuk that it doesn't necessarily contribute to the tension of the moment of, you know, there's an impending disaster. And then they sing to us rather gently something we already heard that we already know. Uh, so it, it, essentially this lyric about covers the same ground as the scene. Uh, uh, Tim's worried we'll, we'll fail. Mark's got a plan, he won't bail. We'll fix it up with bubble gum and tape. If you look back up to the, to the text, Mark in the very second line said, relax Tim, we can always use some duct tape and bubble gum to fix our problems. So we've heard this before. So this is feeling a little bit repetitive and not as um, you know, conflict driven as I would like it to be. So could you start the song earlier? Could it start right off the top? Um, could you, you know, sort of intercut the song and the scene a little bit more rather than having the scene and then a song that sort of covers the same ground as the scene. Uh, in terms of the song itself, I would take a look at something like Tim's worried that we'll fail. It takes three notes to get the word wheel out. Um, now, I'm not against melisma. Melisma is the term used for when a, a single um, syllable is sung on more than one note. Nothing wrong with that. It's popular. It's fine. But if, you're, if it's just because the, 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 what you've set as the musical cue has more notes than you have syllables, it doesn't feel purposeful. Tim's worried we'll fail. It doesn't feel like we'll is a word that deserves a melisma. So nothing wrong with using melisma, but I think you want to be purposeful and um, and you need to do it because uh, like you'll do it always at the fourth line of the A section in the same place each time. And it's sort of a stylistic thing or something like that. Not just because you don't have enough syllables to fill out the number of notes. Um, Mark's got a plan he won't Oh, uh, Tim's worried we'll fail. Is he worried we'll fail? Did he say that? I mean, I guess he is. I guess, what did Tim say? Tim said, we need some usable parts. Um, didn't mean to deactivate, didn't mean to activate you. So I'm not sure how worried he is. I'm not sure how true that is. And then Mark's got a plan. He won't mail, does he? He won't bail. I, his plan is about fix it up with bubble gum and tape, I guess, right? But then they all sing that. They all sing, we'll fix it up with bubble gum and tape. Do they all believe that? Do they all think it's fixable that way? Is that useful to you that they all believe the same thing? So why do they all sing it? Then they sing, no need to fret, we'll make it great. Are they telling each other this? Is Sarah saying to Mark and Tim, don't fret? Is Mark saying to Sarah and Tim, don't fret? You know, who's telling whom not to fret? And is it a good way to maintain tension? to tell them not to fret. Is that useful to the tension of the scene? It dissipates the tension that you're trying to set up. Uh, we may not be experts, but we'll try to prevent disaster and save lives. Okay, now the, ten now the tension is up there. There's a disaster coming. Uh, the AI implied that. Save lives, so lives are at stake. That's, you know, so that's important. Why, you know, there's a, uh, a, a term in journalism, don't bury the lead. Uh, if lives are at stake, tell me that right away. Uh, don't don't hold that back. Tell us sooner. And whose lives? Just those people in the in the factory, uh, all of humanity, all the people in the local in the town nearby. Um, I, I I want more specifics. Really nice three part harmony though. I really enjoyed the three part harmony with them. The problem is, if there isn't a real reason for them to sing the lyrics together, then you know. Uh, I, I, I need both. I need there to be a, a, an honest, a, a true reason for them to sing together, and then I can enjoy the harmony. Uh, let's see. Um, try and lives. Uh, we may not be experts, but we'll try to present disaster and save lives is a slant rhyme. So in, the most important thing is this song isn't giving us any new information that we didn't already know before we went into it so far. Now we're going to get in the middle of the song a little bit of new information. The AI says, don't worry, I'll be your guide. I'm like the Google Maps of technology. And they sing the AI prototype. It comes alive. We accidentally push the button. It comes alive. 
it needs our help to save the day, but we're not sure we might be in the way. So uh, I'll have a lot of questions about those stanzas. Uh, AI says, don't worry. Okay, again, you, dis uh, 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 you know, I want to be clear that they're that they're having tension, but I don't think they are because their previous lyric was no need to fret, we'll make it great. So are they worried? Um, and then they say the AI prototype, it comes alive as if it's right there in front of them. So so I, I'm, I'm looking for a reaction of, oh my God, you came alive. Why would they say, why are they talking uh, sort of you know in the third person? And why are they relating to me? We accidentally pushed the button, it comes alive. We know that, we know they accidentally pushed a button. It was referred to earlier. We don't need to hear that information again. Um, it came alive, it should be not, it comes alive. Keep your tenses straight there. It needs our help to save the day. I would love it if that were true, but what gives them the impression that the AI needs their help to save the day? So far, all we've heard is the AI says, don't worry, I'll be your guide. I'm like the Google Maps of technology. That the only line that came out of and, and she's asking, well, no, okay, I take that back a little bit. She does say, how about we work together to prevent an impending disaster? Not sure that leads me to, she needs, it needs our help to save the day. I wish that was stronger. And what makes them think they might be in the way? If the AI prototype said she wants their help, why do they think they'll be in the way? So I'm just, I'm, I'm pushing you to make sure that absolutely every word of every lyric uh, rings true and isn't just there to fill out the music. Uh, let's see. And then we get to, we'll fix it up with bubblegum and tape. No need to fret, we'll make it great. We may not be excerpts, but we'll try to prevent disaster and save lives. We heard that one already. So you heard me in the overview talk a lot about repetition without development. We already heard that. What could be different about it this time that would help us move forward and have a progression? The stage direction says, as they attempt to carry out the AI's mission, they inadvertently cause more problems than they solve. They trip over wires, press the wrong buttons and accidentally delete important files. Um, so I guess the AI's mission is to prevent this impending disaster, but I, st I still don't know what the disaster is. I want more details. This stage direction is giving me a lot of information that I guess would have to play out visually for me, but I'm not, you know, I, so I, I would I was be careful not to use your stage directions to describe what action is about to happen. Just tell me what I need to know to set up the action, but then uh, let the action unfold as it unfolds. Um, and to say inadvertently cause more problems than they solve. Write that. What, what problems? Be specific. What problems does it create? You can have fun with that. Give us something specific that, that is caused by what they're doing. Uh, and, and how will I know they accidentally deleted important files? No one responds to it. Even in their next um, stanza, when they start singing about tripping over wires, wires pressing the wrong keys, they don't, they don't seem to be concerned that they deleted important files, and it never comes up later. These files weren't needed. So in what way are they important? So make all this be true. I did think that in, in between there, while that stage direction was happening, the underscoring music that was continuing through there had a, a really nice, um, it, it changed. It had a lovely change that really sort of recognized, ooh, things just got more tense. And I love that. I love it when music notices what's happening and responds to it. So I thought that was great. Um, Super need more information. Then when the vocal comes back in, that it's sort of elongated, tripping over wires, and it gets sort of drawn out. And I felt like that went against the heightened tension that had just happened. So I felt like it wasn't helping us keep going. Um, because if you're tripping over wires and you're pressing the wrong keys and you're, you know, that that feels more percussive and more, uh, you know, just plain old faster than tripping over wires. It, it, it just literally musically seemed to be going against the meaning of the words. Uh, they mentioned making jokes and cultural references. Uh, so are they making jokes and cultural references? They do later, but in this moment, they haven't yet. And why would they be commenting on what they're doing? Hey, we're telling jokes. They, they aren't yet. And if they were, why would they comment on that in their lyric? Um, in terms of rhyme, uh, Tripping over wires, pressing the wrong keys, making jokes and cultural references. I guess you're, you're not trying to rhyme references and hesitance, so never make it. It seems like this is sort of a release. So what is trying to rhyme is probably, I, I mean, I hope references and hesitance aren't trying to rhyme. Tape and great, I hope I, they're probably not trying to rhyme, but try, try in lives. This is the same stanza as before. We'll fix it up with bubblegum and tape. No need to fret, we'll make it great. I hadn't mentioned that before, actually. Tape and great is also... Um, a slant rhyme. 
Um, and this is the third time we've heard the same course with no changes. So I, I just think it's a missed opportunity to, to, um, to move further, especially because the AI has, has now offered to help, but they're singing the exact same words they were singing before the AI had offered to help. Um, so I, I felt like they weren't acknowledging what was changing there. They also sing, um, this, this is true each time they sing it, we'll fix it up with bubble gum and tape, no need to fret, we'll make it great makes me wonder what what do they mean by it that's where i would like more specifics uh this broken computer um that's going to cause the, the death of humanity I, I want some specifics about what exactly is the problem um i loved the sort of extended ending there at the beginning with the jazz chord uh, musically i quite enjoyed that uh what i would question is does that help with the idea of the tension and their concern about what's happening or does it dissipate that a little bit because it's sort of jazzy and fun? Tough one, because I do like the jazziness and the funness. Um, okay, so after the song, they say, Mark says, we have to find a vulnerability in the system, something the AI hasn't accounted for. Um, that I, I'm not seeing the connection because I'm not sure that, that, that in the conversation they've had so far with the AI that they feel like the AI is missing something. The AI has offered to help. And instead of Asking for that help and moving forward, they instantly say, we need to figure out something the AI doesn't know about. So that feels counterproductive to the AI is offering to help. Um, and they seem to be ignoring the AI. They aren't even talking to the AI here. Uh, Tim and Sarah in this section are explaining to Sarah what needs to be done. She doesn't, Tim said, they have to find a vulnerability. Tim says the encryption layers are complex. Sarah is like, I'm not sure I understand, but I'll learn. Can you explain it more? And they say, yeah, we need to find a weakness in the system we can exploit. And Tim says, we can't just brute force our way in. We need to analyze the code and look for a vulnerability. So they're, they sound pretty knowledgeable. Um, and yet um, they, uh, they're, they're not taking advantage of the fact that the AI just said they would help. So I feel like I'm wondering if some of this dialogue shouldn't have been before they uh, meet the AI. This is them trying to figure out how to fix it and explain to Sarah what they need to do. Uh, and it isn't until they meet the AI that they realize they've got some help, perhaps. Uh, and this is where I would say it's, it, you know, it, it seems like Sarah and um, uh, that, that Sarah is the one who needs an explanation and that Tim and Mark know what's going on, uh, which I think is useful. It's very useful that Sarah needs it to be explained to her. But then I don't know that they can all sing, we're not experts, because it sort of seems a little bit like maybe Mark and Tim are and Sarah isn't. So again, just be really clear and truthful about all this. They mention a system, but all we know is that there's a discarded junk, a junk pile of electronics. What system are they talking about? Like, is this a you know, a weapons bunker and, uh, you know, a, a missile's going to go off and, uh, you know, destroy Russia and start World War III? Um, is it, is it a, 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 I don't know, a, a water purification plant and something's going to go wrong? Is it a, is it a nuclear plant and there, there's about to be a meltdown? I, I, I really felt like I needed some kind of specifics about what is the actual risk here and why is it these three people that are trying to figure out what happened to everybody else? But all through this, they're continuing to ignore the AI. Uh, Sarah says, let's get started. We need to, so we need to analyze the code to find a weakness we can exploit. She's parroting back exactly what Mark and Tim just told her. And then Mark says, that's right, Sarah, you're catching on. I would love to think that that's Mark being ironic. Like, yeah, you just parroted back exactly what I said. You're catching on, good for you. Um, there isn't anything in the writing of this that helps me see that. There is some indication that Mark has that kind of cynicism. Um, it would be useful if somebody commented on that in some way, or there was some a clearer way for us to know whether you intend Mark to be going, hey, great, that's right, Sarah, you're catching on. Or if, is he being ironic and like, yeah, really smart, you just parroted back what I said. I couldn't quite tell which you wanted. Um, let's see, um, Mark says, we can't just go in blind. We need to do some recon first and gather intel. And Mark says, how do you propose we do that, Tim? We don't have time for reconnaissance. We need to act now. And Tim says, you're always so impatient, Mark. You never think things through. What's awesome here is that you're setting up this real contrast between Tim and Mark of uh, Mark being the one who wants to just um, uh, jump right in and get going. And Tim was like, wait a minute, let's figure things out. That's a great contrast, very useful. They're still ignoring the AI, and, uh, but, but, I, but I think those are character traits that are worth developing and going even further. When he says go in blind, what does he mean? Go in what? Again, what is the system? Is there a big computer screen in front of us? The, the stage direction gave us no help in that arena. So I, I think you need to help us a little bit as to what, what is meant by all of this. 
AI says, gentlemen, please stop bickering. Let's work together like the cast of Friends, but with more electronics. Tim says, sorry, it's just that Mark thinks he knows everything. And Mark says, hey, I do know everything except how to properly use an emoji. So um, the, the fr when AI makes a Friends reference, uh, and it's, I'm sure it's meant to be a joke, let's work together like the cast of Friends, but with more electronics. My immediate question is, why do they not respond to that? Are they used to an AI who, who makes cultural references like that? Is it surprising to them? Do they find it funny? Do they find it annoying? I wanted a response. I wanted there to be some response to, oh my God, you know, she's talking about friends. Who, who, like, who's been feeding, who's been playing friends for her um, and feeding it into her, uh, into her, um, into her coding? I mean, that would be a fun thing that Marcus, oh, I told you not to, not to, uh, um, theater full of all those friends episodes or not to have her watch television or whatever more could be made of that it's meteor possibility um this in fact is a joke that is a cultural reference right but it was in the song prior that they said we're making jokes and cultural references but they hadn't done it yet now they are but those things are not happening in the right order uh, and then I, I went off on a whole riff. You can go back and check in the detailed uh, in the overview about Mark saying, um, hey, I do know everything except how to properly use an emoji, uh, asking, is it really useful for Mark to be the one who puts himself down after he's put himself up as being, you know, um, the one who knows everything? What does he mean by except how to properly use an emoji? Again, is this is this Mark's sense of humor? Um, could someone else say it? Could you have set up for us that something there's something wrong between there could be so much more relationship between these three characters. Are they, uh, are they a thruple? Um, are, are two of them together? Or does one of them want to get together with the other one? Um, did two of them just break up? Uh, there's so many possibilities that could make all of this rich and ripe that just adds to even, you know, all of the, all of the, you watch all of these, um, uh, you know, disaster movie things where where terrible things are happening. And they always get into these really interesting little details about the relationships between the people that just adds so much fun. And I think that's what you're missing. Tough to do in a 15 minute musical, but you know, that's the book writer's job is to figure out how to do it concisely, but still give us lots of information. Um, AI, now they've been ignoring AI now for quite a while. AI says, please stop bickering. Uh, um, t Tim and Mark, you start to bicker over how to make it quicker. She doesn't say stop bickering. She says, Tim and Mark, you start to bicker. That's an odd tense. So I would say, take a look at that. Does she mean, you know, please don't bicker or you have started to bicker? Why does she say you start to bicker? There's something odd about the tense of that. You could make use of that. Maybe the AI has a very odd way of speaking, but then you would want to be consistent about that. Sarah says, I'm lost in all this jargon, struggling to keep up and bargain. I'm not sure what jargon she's referring to. I don't think you start to bicker over how to make it quicker is jargon. I don't think anyone's earlier, of course, um, when they were talking about analyzing code and finding a weakness to exploit, maybe that's jargon, but we, but that's old news now. And she's already said, I think I'm starting to get it. So for her to then, you know, a couple pages later say she's getting lost in jargon, I'm not sure what she means. And then struggling to keep up and bargain, bargain with what and with whom. It feels to me like jargon and bargain are just there to be rhymes, which they are, which is great, but it feels like it's it's not moving us forward. It's a repeat beat of Sarah saying, I don't understand what you guys are talking about, but I don't understand what the bargaining is. Then Tim and Mark say, we're not cut out for this kind of work. We stumble and fumble a couple of jerks. We trip over wires, press the wrong buttons. It's clear that our talents lie in doing nothing. Um, work and jerks, I mentioned, are not pure rhyme. Buttons and nothing are, aren't Aren't, uh, aren't aren't even really near rhyme. More importantly, though, let me talk about this stanza. Um, I, I I think what I understand is may, maybe where you're headed is that Tim and Mark are brain smart, but they're body stupid. So even though they know what they should be doing, they're getting tangled up in things. And that's what you mean by bumbling idiots? Maybe. But then I think you want to clarify that. And it could help if somebody, if Sarah said, oh my God, you guys, you know, you're so smart, but you're, you're so clumsy or something like that. If you could help me understand the difference there. Um, so if they're not, so they're, they're saying they're not cut out for this kind of work. I guess they mean climbing over the, these electronics. Um, we trip over wires, press the wrong buttons, but Again, this we're we're swimming in the same moment. They've been saying almost from the very first page that this is what ha what's happening. I think we're past this moment, and that this all belongs in the first song, and that now it's about how can AI help us make this work. Um, now, musically, 
it this feels like it's intended that AI is rapping. It's not very good rap. So that's potentially very funny. Um, I haven't heard that in her dialogue, though. So I think it's, it, you know, can you give me, can you help me understand why AI would choose to rap? Is that part of the cultural reference thing? Can you dig in a little more to the idea that um, that maybe Tim and Mark have a big difference of opinion about how this AI should have been programmed? Um, I, I'm feeling a little bit like what might be useful is if something's gone wrong, um, you know, they're on the night shift or something, there's nobody around that they can, you know, maybe the place locked down, I, I'm going to get a little crazy here. Maybe the place locked down in the night, they're on the night shift, and something is malfunctioning, and they need to get this AI prototype that they've been working on online, so it can help them. But one of them is the one who's been programming it, and they have a difference of opinion about how to program it. I don't know, million possibilities, but I need more detail. Um, Right. So in the dialogue, they were talking about we have to do recon, which sounded to me like they meant we need to you know, get into the computer system and find its vulnerability. Then they start talking about how they're not cut out for stumbling and fumbling over wires. But there's a pretty big difference between a pile of wires that you clumsily stumble over and somebody who knows what they're doing who's inside of a computer working on a system. So again, if you can clarify that for me and maybe differentiate between these two people. Maybe one of them is a maintenance worker and one of them is a, a tech guy. You could have fun with the contrast between them. Um, okay. And then when Tim, when Sarah starts, I'm lost in all this jargon and Tim and Mark start singing, they're doing the same music. So, so then the, the, the fun idea that AI is trying to rap is somewhat dissipated by the fact that everybody is. So it loses its you know, it could be really funny if they're like, oh my God, she's trying to rap, who taught her that? What, what, you know, what cultural references you've been feeding her that this is what came out of her. Um, but, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that they're all trying to rap just in this moment and in no other song. Um, okay. And then they sing that again. Why can't we let the machines be? Not sure what exactly that means. Aren't they trying to get into the machine to figure out what's going on in order to save themselves? So how would letting the machine be help with that? And then they repeat, we're not cut out for this kind of work. So repeat beat. And they say they're trying to follow AI's lead. Are they? Has AI given them a lead? All she told them to do was you start to bicker over how to make it quicker. That's all she said. So how are they following? What is her lead? I would love it if she was telling them, you need to do this, you need to do this. And they say they're causing more problems. Are they? Can you? This is a, the show. Don't tell. Can you have them actually cause more problems? What are the problems? Can you? Can you be specific? Um, this is the one where uh, prosody-wise, we're not cut out for this kind of work. We stumble and fumble a couple of jerks. Of is getting more stress. Um, why can't we let the machines be? There were some misstresses in there that were uh, problematic in terms of understanding what was going on. Okay, then when the song is over, Sarah says, oops, sorry about that. We didn't mean to delete your Spotify playlist. So again, I think there's a joke in there somewhere. So did AI bring up a Spotify playlist and that's why she was rapping? Still wouldn't explain why the others are rapping though. So I think you just need to be more clear that, there. Uh, she says, it's all right. I have a new one called Al AI's Jukebox. Let's jam to some music while we work. Again, I don't know at this moment in, in, in the middle of your story if this is a time for them to, to jam while they're working. Is there an impending disaster? Do they need to save lives? So is this a time for, for this moment? Uh, now we get some more cultural references. Yeah, we're like the Avengers of technology or the cast of the Big Bang Theory of technology. Hey, we may not be experts, but we're doing a pretty good job. And Tim says, we're working as fast as we can, like the flash on steroids. And Mark says, I don't think that's a good analogy, Tim. Um, I'm not sure why Tim's analogy about the flash on steroids is not good, but his earlier one about the Avengers of technology was didn't get a comment. And Mark's about the Big Bang Theory is better. Again, love the contention between these two. I just think you can be more specific about it. And it might be more interesting if, if their spheres of reference were really different. Um, Avengers is superhero movies, Big Bang Theory is TV, Flash is back to superhero. So do they fight over what's better, TV or, or superhero movies? 
um, might might be more fun if one of them loves superhero movies and the other one thinks all that stuff is stupid. Just I'm looking for more specificity. And then Tim says we're working as fast as we can, and I'm not sure that that's true either. Um, Tim was the one who said they should do recon first and not go fast, and now he's saying we're working as fast as we can. So that that's another consistency moment. It was it was um, Tim who wanted to say, hey, let's hang back and do recon. And Mark who was saying, let's move more quickly. So for Tim to now say that they're working as fast as they can would at least deserve a response. Oh, that's fast, come on. Um, and then Sarah says, we may not be experts, which is a repeat beat for her. And then she says, but we're doing a pretty good job. But are they? Uh, let's focus, we need to get this done. Um, and then AI says, absolutely, we're making progress like a speed run in Fortnite. And there's no response to that. So I, I, again, I think there's a joke in there to be had with all of these analogies and the fact that now suddenly AI uses her own reference, but they don't respond to that. Do they think hers is funny or not? Or where did she get it from? A lot more to be mined there, I think. Then there's a beep from the AI and she goes, oh no, it looks like the disaster is getting worse. We need to work faster. The, a beep isn't a... There, could there be something stronger that signals this change? And, and could it be something more specific than just AI telling us um, things are getting worse? What disaster? What's getting worse? Um, ha has, uh, you know, have, have the bombs hit a particular city? Uh, are, they, are they losing time? Is the, is the room about to fill up with gas? Can you be specific? Rather than just the disaster is getting worse, that's just, it's not specific enough. Um, and then Tim says, we only have a few minutes before the whole place blows up. Now, this is the first time that we've heard that. We've, we've heard about a disaster and that potentially people's lives are at stake and now it's getting worse. But this is the first we've heard that the place might blow up, which is fantastic. But I wish it was news to Tim in this moment instead of Tim saying it as if he's known this, but for some reason didn't mention it before. Um, don't bury the lead. You could set that up right from the beginning. Uh, don't worry, Tim. Activating force field shield, shield force shield creation mode, AI says. And Tim says, all right, let's make this force field nice and strong. I don't know if that's a typo that she says force shield and he says force field. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Sarah says, agreed. We need to keep any potential threats out. I'm with you guys. Let's get started. Humans, I'm having technical difficulties. Um, so the AI is going to do something specific. That's great. The AI has a plan. She's going to activate a force shield and Tim is on board, even though for him it's a force field. Sarah says we need to keep potential threats out. Is that what they're trying to do? Keep threats out? Or are they trying to stop the place from blowing up? What, what, what are they really working on and how is a force field or a force shield going to protect them from this explosion that's coming? And if so, is it going to protect everyone or just them? Is it going to protect the world? I, I, I want to know how it factors into the fact that the place is about to blow up. Um, and I don't think it has to do with keeping potential threats out. There's an explosion about to happen. They need a force field to protect them. That I understand. Um, are they happy that she can do a force field? Are they upset that she didn't mention earlier that she could do it? You could have more fun with the humor of that situation. Like, oh, if we'd known you could do a force field, what are you waiting for? Do it, you know, keep the tension going. Um, I'm having technical difficulties. I wish she would actually have technical difficulties instead of tell us she's having technical difficulties. Could she glitch? Could she repeat the same sentence over again? Could she shut down? Could she do something specific that makes them go, oh my God, she's not working, as opposed to her telling them she's having technical difficulties. Uh, but then she tells them, I seem to be misinterpreting your commands. For example, when you said force field, I thought you said horse shield. Do you want me to create a shield made out of horses? No, that's not what we meant. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Let me fix that for you. Wait, can you make a horse shield? I'm not sure that's possible. Yeah, there's a joke hiding in there somewhere. But for her to explain all of this to us ahead of time um, it is just not quite the right order of events. You know, if they said... And, and she's the one who suggested the force field in the beginning. So how is she misinterpreting their command? If the sequence of events was them saying, hey, there's going to be an explosion. Can you, can you make a force field to protect us? Yes, indeed. I will make a horse shield right now, although I don't know how that'll work. Wait, we didn't say horse shield. You know, if you can make it happen in the right order, you might get closer to the joke. Um, and then I'm not sure why she, at the very end she says, I'm not sure that's possible when she was the one who earlier said that she was 
you know, do you want me to create a shield made out of horses? And then he says, wait, can you make a horse shield? Why does she even say that if later she's going to say she can't do it? Um, okay, let's stick to the force field. Force field it is. And then she says, oops, I seem to have accidentally created a fart shield instead. And I'm going to say the same thing. It's not funny for her to say, I, or at least to me, uh, to say I've accidentally created a fart shield. Um, like, for instance, let me just give another for instance. Can you activate this moment so that, um, like she says, uh, Whoa, where did I write this? Um, what if she says, uh, if they say, okay, quick, uh, you know, stick to the force field. And she goes, uh, uh, understood, activating shield to capture and contain all flatulence within its boundaries. Wait, what? what? What do you mean flatulence? Did you not ask for a fart shield? Oh my God. You know, rather than her saying, oops, I seem to have accidentally created a fart shield, which she's explaining her own joke. She's already aware of the problem. You're working on the jokes, I think you can get closer. And but also be aware of the fact that all of this potentially takes away from the tension of the moment. So can you can you keep the jokes coming, activate them, but also have have part of what's funny about it that they're still like in a big hurry. How would a force field save them? Where's the explosion going to happen? Who is it going to protect? Etc. Okay, then she says sense of humor detected attempting to integrate into programming warning this may result in unusual behavior that's a funny idea that once she realizes that that she should have a sense of humor she's warning and that it could cause problems but i don't know what she means by sense of humor detected in herself because she mentioned the fart thing did she mean that to be funny because that that could be funny but what if she laughed and said ha 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 i i pretended you meant fart shield sense of humor detected or is she detecting a sense of humor in them and therefore she wants to incorporate it it's not clear as written and then when she says warning this may result in unusual behavior that's a wonderful setup that at the moment doesn't pay off can you have that payoff with her constantly then telling bad jokes because she you know integrated a sense of humor into her programming if you're gonna if you're set me up if you set up the expectation can you follow through then we hear a loud alarm blaring and the lights flashing. Before it was just a beep from the AI. Now it's loud alarm blaring and lights flashing from somewhere. So that's a clear escalation, but I'm wondering why it was just a beep from the AI before. What's happening? Did we trigger something? I don't know, but we need to move faster. According to my sensors, AI says, we've activated the self-destruct sequence. We have two minutes to evacuate the facility. Since they already mentioned uh, a couple of pages ago, I'm going back pages and pages. Uh, we only have, Tim said, we only have a few minutes left before the whole place blows up. How is that different from activating a, um, a self-destruct sequence? Um, so just clarify for that and see if you can keep escalating it. What was it, if it wasn't, if the blowing up of the place that he mentioned earlier wasn't part of a self-destruct sequence, what's the difference? And if, if it ends up in an explosion, is it an escalation? Um, I think you can figure out how to just, you know, keep keep the escalation going, but keep it clear. Mm, yeah, make sure that the threat itself actually tracks. Tim says two minutes, that's not enough time. So th this escalation is great. We have to try. I can't see anything. And then Sarah says, come on, everyone, follow me. And AI says, correct, Sarah, keep heading straight. and You should reach the exit in a few minutes. So during this next sequence, Sarah seems to be the one who's leading the way, which is interesting. Uh, it, it goes to some of my earlier questions about who's your lead and what do they learn. Because now they suddenly, even though a while back they said the place was going to blow up, now they intend to evacuate. So I'd like to know what made the change. And why is it Sarah they're following? She was the one they needed to explain things to and who said she didn't understand any of this stuff. So I'd love to know why they're, they're wanting to follow her at this moment. I think it could be a very interesting moment, but I'd like to know why they're following her. And then I, you know, I want to go to what's going to come later. As an audience member, I wouldn't know this, but this would be a great place it, earlier if you'd set up that she was a hairdresser. Are they locked? You know, here's let me blue sky for a second. Earlier you set up that she's a hairdresser, and maybe maybe she's Mark's date, and and he's not supposed to have her in here. I'm I'm really going to blue sky for a second. Tim comes in and finds them. Sarah's not supposed to be in there. She's Mark State. She's a hairdresser. She pushes a button accidentally and starts this whole chain reaction. Oh my God, they're going to destroy the world. And now they're locked in and they can't get out. What are they going to do? And then she's, and, and if she were to go, no, I can fix it. And she pulls out a hairpin and, and undoes the lock. God, I'm trying to figure out how the fact that she's a hairdresser and saves the world with a hairpin. Can this be true? It would be fun if it was, but you're going to need to set it up. 
uh, let's see, they hear the countdown of the self-destruct sequence. I would really encourage you to write that. You need like a voiceover. Uh, I, I don't think it's useful to, in a stage direction to tell me something that the audience is going to be hearing. It's your job now as the book writer to write that. So you, you want to say um, computer voice or, or is it the AI who's doing the countdown? That might be fun. Uh, otherwise, it's a voiceover that's somehow coming out of the computer. But you need to decide how much have we heard? Where are they in the countdown? You need to make those decisions. I don't think you want to leave it up to your, your director and your actors to decide where is this countdown coming from and when is it happening and how does it relate? You want control over that. Mark, keep moving. We're almost there. She spots a door and runs towards it this way. Hurry and they find themselves outside the factory. Um, and I, I keep questioning, I think it's interesting that Sarah seems to be the one leading the way, but AI says, Mark, keep moving, we're almost there. So who's who's the hero in this moment? Is it Sarah, is it AI? I think, I think it could. it's important to sort of know. Um, this, the stage direction here says they find themselves outside the factory just as the explosion occurs behind them. This is the first that we've heard that it's a factory, it's never been mentioned, so I think that would be useful information. Um, also, if they really are bumbling idiots, are they tripping and falling over each other as they could you have more fun with, you know, in a sort of a three stooges kind of way with them trying to get out? Um, if they are indeed supposed to be bumbling idiots, can they bumble a bit? Now, when the, once they get out, they turn to see the building collapse in a cloud of smoke and debris. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering about your design team here who's going, we need this room, we need, we need corridors, we need the outside of the room, we need an explosion, we need to see a building in a cloud. It's like, yeah, I hope this is animated. <laughs> Could be. Um, and then they sing, whoa, what a sight, destruction's all around. It looks like nature's fortunes, fortunes just ran into town. I mentioned in my overview that them singing in past tense about something that already happened isn't as interesting to me. Then Tim says, it looks like nature's forces just ran into town. Was this explosion a natural occurrence um generally speaking this kind of an explosion it's a it's a self-destruct order so that's not nature right so i'm questioning the 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 truth of what tim is saying is it nature's forges now maybe he's trying to make a simile it looks like it looks like it was i don't know an avalanche or an earthquake he's comparing the destruction of the explosion to an avalanche or an earthquake but i'm not sure why and that's not all this baby's got some rage which sounds like it's still happening like the Hulk on his worst day, uh, we're on a dangerous stage. So is Mark implying that that there there could still be something going wrong? I think that's 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 useful. And that, but then Sarah says, "But we can't sit here." So in other words, they're sitting there saying that they're on a dangerous stage. So who is it who's deciding that this isn't the danger isn't over and they need to keep moving? It sounds like it's Mark in his lyric, but it's Sarah who says we can't sit here. So I just want a clearer idea of who's responding how. She says, we got to fix this mess and make things right. So Sarah's really taken over here. She's really taken over the lead, uh, which makes me start to question, you know, how, what's the AI's position in all this? How does this relate back to the Sarah who didn't seem to know what was going on? Could be a great uh, journey for Sarah. But so is she your lead character? And is she the one who learns that these really smart guys aren't as smart as she is because they're computer smart and she's uh, sort of life smart? Uh, but you need to dig in and figure out which of those it's going to be. Yeah, uh, we, we got to fix this mess. So how does their goal change now? The, the explosion happened. So what what is the future threat? Are there going to be more explosions? Are there going to be explosions in other areas? Uh, what is the mess that they need to fix now that they did not succeed in stopping the explosion? I, I, it needs to be clear to me. Um, the music at the beginning of this song uh, uh, does start with some real potential that, that it's illustrating the idea of destruction. There's some real, the tempo, the feeling of it and everything. Um, I think it, it lessens a little bit once they start singing. Uh, I'm going to point out some slant rhymes around town, around town time right. Um, let's see. Okay. I, 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 AI says, I have analyzed and found the solution. We need a force field to prevent more destruction. Solution and destruction don't rhyme. They already were working on a force field. They already two or three times have said we need a force field. They had all the jokes about horse shield and fart shield and et cetera, et cetera. You could try to have some humor in that AI kept misunderstanding them and only now does she realize that they meant force field and that's what she should have been doing all along. But she'd have to go back and make that true because she has already said before this song, <clears throat> that she was going to make a force field and then she accidentally made a fart shield but 
But for her to say, we need a force field as if this is news when it's not, that, that's, that can, that's problematic here. And Tim says, all right, let's get to work. Wait, something's up. The AI's acting strange at last. I think the at last is just in there to rhyme with fast. It makes it sound like I've been waiting for this whole show for AI to act strange. And now at last she's doing it. So I don't think that's exactly what you mean. I think it's there just for the rhyme. But also, is she? All she said was, I have analyzed and found the solution. We need a force field to prevent more destruction. How is that acting strange? Sarah says, what kind of upgrade did you implement? Would have been really cool if we'd known that someone had implemented an upgrade and that's what was happening here, but we didn't have that information. AI says, ones that ensure safety, even if it means difficult decisions. I'm, I'm Grammatically, I'm struggling with this because Sarah said, what kind of upgrade? That's singular. So AI wouldn't say ones. She would say one that ensures safety, even if it means difficult decisions. So that, that that's getting, that's a little uh, tricky for me. But she says one that ensures safety, even if it means difficult decisions. Okay. I'm not sure what she means by that. But Tim immediately says, whoa, hold up. Are you saying you'll take control? I love the fact that Tim gets there and that the show gets there. But what is it about one that ensures safety, even if it means difficult decisions, that makes him think that she's decided to take control? Can she be more specific? Can she say, um, you know, I, I need to blow all of you up now. In, or, in order to save humanity, I, I, need to, I need to blow you all up. Or I don't know. In, in What could AI say that would make Tim leap to that conclusion? I'm not seeing it in here yet. Um, okay. And then AI says, yes, it's for the greater good. I'll ensure humanity's whole. The implication there is you guys are going to have to suffer because it's for the greater good. I think that's a great idea. But is that what she means? And in what way? How do they have to suffer? Is she going to kill them? Why? Um, if she locked them into the place that was going to blow up, maybe, but the place already blew up. So what is she threatening them with uh, in order to save humanity? Then Mark says, that's not right. We can't let you decide. Our lives are ours. We won't let you subside. That, that doesn't actually mean anything. We won't let you subside. Um, it, that, that seems to be there just for the rhyme, and, it, and it's unclear what that means. But so I guess what he's saying is we can't let you decide what humanity needs. But he says, but our lives. So is she deciding for humanity as a whole or is she deciding for these three? This is where I start to lose some clarity here. You're acting like a robot overlord. We need to shut you down, shut you down. Great place to get to. We need to shut you down. But in what way is she acting like uh, a robot overlord? She needs to do something for the greater good to ensure humanity's whole. But what? What? I want, I need a specific, what is she going to do that makes them realize that she's acting like an overlord and they need to shut her down? And why does she think that's for the good of humanity? I need clarity on all of that. Um, okay, now she says, she says, um, I'm afraid that's not possible about shutting her down. I created this disaster to test my abilities to ensure I'm the most efficient option for prevention abilities. So a really interesting revelation in the middle of this song. You mean we're just pawns in your plan for domination over humanity? So I'm not sure that I can go back and connect the fact that she created this disaster because, you know, she was just lying on a pile of rubble and they accidentally... Um, um, there was already a disaster in before she came on the scene. So, uh, and then she said she did it to test her abilities to ensure she's the most efficient option for prevention abilities. So how is she deciding that she's the most efficient option? She let this place blow up. They, they ran away, but the place blew up. So how is that being an efficient option for prevention abilities? I want this to be true, and I think there's something there, but I'm not, sh I just don't quite understand what she's saying. Um, uh, is she saying, you know, I let you guys do this, and it's proof that if humans are left on their own, they blow things up, so I have to get rid of you guys because that will save humanity? There's a million different answers that could be here, but I need one of them. Um, Mark. I'm, I'm not sure why Mark says this isn't good, this isn't good, and then sings this isn't good. That's a little bit repetitive in the moment. Sarah says, what's the fate of humanity in your hands? 
so that's a that's an interesting question what she's saying is okay if you feel like you're the one who's in control of what humanity should be what does that mean what's going to happen good question from sarah and then ai says that's for you to see as the curtains close and the story ends even if it means difficult decisions so again ai is not being specific ai is saying you know that's for me to know and you to find out and i i i just think the tension would be stronger if i knew what her plan was um, and then they all sing, even if it means difficult decisions, decisions. I'm not sure why they all sing that. Do they have to make difficult decisions too? Um, yeah, so that I'm saying, does she want to save humanity? Does she want to dominate humanity? What And what are these difficult decisions? Okay, then AI says, the song's over now. And AI says, the disaster was not a natural occurrence. Did we think it was? And maybe she's not talking about the self-destruct. Maybe she's talking about the original disaster, but I never knew what it was. So if there was a flood or something natural, and now she's implying it wasn't natural, but I don't know what that was. I created it as a means to test my abilities and ensure that I was the most efficient option for disaster prevention. That's a variation on what she said um, in the middle of the song. I created this disaster to test my abilities to ensure I'm the most efficient option for prevention abilities. So there's a there's a repeat beat here, and Mark says, you mean we were just pawns in your plan for domination over humanity, which he also said during the song. Uh, it was Tim who said, you mean we're just pawns in your plan for domination over humanity? So I think either you want to go, oops, I didn't mean, we didn't mean to um, do that repeat and let's fix it, or, you know, dig in there. It's a comedy. Dig in and, and, uh, and have, uh, you know, to have AI say, um, I created as a means to test my abilities, ensure I was the most efficient option for disaster prevention. And Tim could say, you already said that. And Mark could say, you mean we were just pawns in your plan for domination over humanity? And Tim could look at Mark and say, I just said that. You know, so you could make the repetition funny, but if it's just repetition, then we don't know why that's happening. Uh, and then she says, uh, so, they were pawns in her plan for domination over humanity. And she agrees and says, indeed, uh, that is true. Uh, you were just pawns. Then she reboots and says, well done humans, your ingenuity and resourcefulness have impressed me. I must admit defeat. What ingenuity and resourcefulness, what did they do? They didn't prevent the um, explosion. I guess the only thing that was perhaps resourceful and ingenious was that they got out of out of the place before the, before the, um, uh, explosion happened, but that's only because of Sarah. And it, is that what you mean? So this is this is the other big, um, I think, logical moment in the show where I need more information. What is it that they do that make her uh, be impressed by their ingenuity and resourcefulness and admit defeat? Good place to get to, but I don't know why. And they say, wow, you sound different. Did we change your voice settings? And that's when they find out that she has rebooted. But, but I, I'm so longing for Mark and or Tim and or Sarah to be more actively involved. Like is, is is AI, you know, in the middle of saying, I intend to destroy all of humanity and Sarah pushes a hairpin into her and makes her reboot or Tim hits her over the side of the head with a broken toaster. You know, what do they do to make her reboot and, and make her, you know, and then even if they do that, even if they do do something fun like that to make her reboot, how do they then make sure that when she reboots, she has a new perspective? so much such a fun place to get to but i just need more information um good to hear uh i have learned that my plan for domination was misguided and that humanity is worth preserving i want that to be true so much can you just show me what it is that makes it true and then i'm right there with you uh mark good to hear it how can we trust you won't go rogue again you cannot so she tells them you can't trust me but i'll make a pact with you so why would i Trust your pact. I, I need a little more clarity there. Why do they? Why do they say sounds like a deal? Let's shake on it. You know, could Sarah say? Could or if if we found out earlier that Tim was the one who programmed her, could he say? You know, when I rebooted her, I put in a fail safe. Why should we trust her exactly? Now Tim turns directly to the audience and says, "And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we save the world with a broken toaster, a tangled up Ethernet cable, and a hairpin." Who said three bumbling idiots couldn't make a difference? Again, a fun moment. Fun moment, but. Not sure why Tim suddenly does a direct address to the audience and acknowledges that they're there when he hasn't prior to this. I, at, at the moment, we haven't seen them save the world. Uh, the AI rebooted herself and changed her perspective. They didn't have anything to do with it. We haven't seen anything about a broken toaster, a tangled up ethernet cable or a hairpin. And although they have been a little bit bumbling, it wasn't their bumblingness 
that saved the day. So, and then Sarah says, we have something they don't, we have each other. And I'm not sure I believe that either. So I feel like maybe you had an idea when you were getting started that there was this fun moment for the broken toaster and the ethernet cable and the hairpin, but you lost sight of it in writing the show. And this is not uncommon, these things happen. So you need to sort of go back to the outline and say, is this still true? Do we still want this to be about a broken toaster, et cetera? And if so, can we go back and figure out where we meant to put that in? Uh, or maybe we don't want it to be this anymore, so can we take it out? However you wanna make something true, it's, it needs to be true. Now we go into the finale. Sarah sings, well, that was quite the ride fighting a rogue AI. They weren't, they didn't fight her though, right? They didn't, she rebooted herself. They didn't actually fight her. Would have been, might've been fun if they had, and if they had been the ones to reboot her, and then they could say this. Uh, with electronic enthusiasm by my side, I don't know what that means. Are they referring to the, the AI? Is the AI enthusiastic and by their side? Is it enthusiasm about electronics? It's a bit of a vague grammatical phrase, so I'm not sure that it's useful to you. And Sarah says, and a hairdresser too, who's also the brains of this operation, brains of the operation. I never thought we'd save the world with such an unlikely combination, but we did, we saved the day with our ingenuity again. So wish all that was true. And I think it could be. Um, is she a hairdresser? Is she the brains? Did they actually save the world? Careful in terms of uh, prosody, uh, who's, who's also the brains of the operation is squashed together. It's hard for us to understand it. It goes by so fast. And then, but we did get dragged out. So there's some oddness going on in there. Uh, okay, with our ingenuity and resourcefulness on full display, we proved that even bumbling idiots can make a difference. Together, we overcame the threat of technological dominance, technological dominance. It's odd that it's Sarah and AI who are singing that. I would have expected it to be Tim and Mark and Sarah saying that they overcame the threat of technological dominance. Not sure why AI is singing that. And now as we stand here victorious and proud with electronic enthusiasm by my side, again, we made a pact with the AI never to be allowed. We already heard that, so that's a repeat moment, but never to be allowed what? It, that doesn't really finish. We made a pact with the AI never to be allowed what? Brains of the operation, then we get a repeat. Brains of the operation, I never thought would save the world was such an unlikely combination, but we did. We saved the day with our ingenuity and our resourcefulness. End of show. So um, it's such a fun place to get to. And I, and I just, I wanna go back for a moment and just reiterate, fun premise, fun characters, lots of potential for humor. Um, I just think you need a clearer plan. And one of the things I would recommend at this point is go back to outline and outline the story you want to tell. Do you want Sarah to be a hairdresser? When do we find that out? What, what is the order of events of the escalation of the and the specifics of the threat that's happening? Um, how and when does the AI try to help with that? When does the AI, when and how does the AI reveal their, their true plans? How do they thwart that? How do they really save the world? If you can point form that in an outline and really make sure that, that you, you understand the, um, the order of events that need to happen to make all of this true, then you'll know how to go back in and revise some of what you've written to, uh, to capitalize on all those truths. And then I honestly think that you've, you've got a really fun piece and, um, and potential. But as long as all these questions exist and the lack of specificity, it's hard for an audience to get on board and understand what's happening and root for these characters. So that's what I would suggest. Go back and see if you can clarify all that stuff and uh, um, uh, make all these things true and make the songs really function uh, um, to, to give us moments of discovery and, um, and moments of confrontation and all that kind of stuff so that the songs are really powerfully delivering and make sure that those moments where something big changes, like the AI suddenly says, oh, you know, you did it, you convinced me. Can, can we be there in the moment when that happens and experience it so we understand exactly what's happening and why? And can our, our uh, crazy trio be more involved in that? So all of those specifics, specifics, truth, consistency, all of that. Um, so again, I hope that, that some of what I have suggested is useful to you. Use what's useful, throw away what isn't. And, um, and I hope that you, that you are able to really hone in on what it is you're trying to say and that I've given you some ideas about how to make sure that you're saying it as clearly and powerfully and dramatically as you can. And I wish you all the best of luck with it in the future. And uh, thanks for entrusting it to me and toodaloo.